Hi, I'm Annie Edmondson. I'm a PhD candidate at Princeton, and I'll be talking about some work I did with a few other folks at Princeton on studying transnational routing detours through surveillance states. So web traffic, as it enters a country, it becomes subject to that country's laws, including their surveillance laws. And as more and more countries are passing mass surveillance laws, clients and end users um, have more need than ever to determine and control which countries their internet traffic is traversing. So the work we did is, can be divided into two parts. The first part is on characterizing these routing detours. So we can answer questions like, which countries are internet paths to popular destinations currently traversing? We can also ask, does local traffic ever leave the country? And if it does, where is it going? So this is the first part. The second part is, can we avoid these routing detours through surveillance states? And so we asked the question, can end users avoid certain countries to popular destinations? And there's two primary ways to get country avoidance. We have a small example here. Um, a client is in Brazil and is accessing content in the United States. The country level path goes through Mexico. So it's Brazil, Mexico, United States. And this is just an example. Uh, the client in Brazil wants to avoid Mexico. So one way to achieve this is routing around the country. So in this example, the path then goes from Brazil to Spain and to the United States. The other way that you can get country avoidance is by accessing a replica of the content that's located in another country where the path to this country does not contain Mexico. So looking at this, we can study how avoidable different countries are. And the last question we want to answer is can end users keep more local traffic local? So we often see paths that look like this. Uh, they start and end in the same country, but they actually traverse a foreign country. Um, we call these paths tromboning paths. And we want to study and see if clients can help keep this local and have the traffic remain within the country. So as I just mentioned, there are a number of countries that are passing more mass surveillance laws. The countries in red here show just a few of the countries that are conducting surveillance. And they're doing this at different levels of intensity. So some are collecting metadata, while others are forcing ISPs to install black boxes that collect everything. Um, and one important thing to note is that there's also surveillance agreements between countries. So one of the most famous ones is the Five Eyes Agreement. This is an agreement between Canada, the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. And they will share all their collected surveillance data. So if one of these countries collects data, it's likely that they'll share it with all other, the other four countries. And so as you can imagine, with more surveillance laws being passed, countries are reacting to that. And so the countries in blue are just a few of the countries that are worried about foreign countries conducting surveillance on their citizens' traffic. Um, some are even taking measures to avoid specific countries. For example, Brazil, after the Snowden revelations, has taken some extreme measures to avoid having their traffic go through the United States. One of the things they're doing is building a 3,500-mile cable from Fortaleza, Brazil, to Portugal without using any American vendors. They're also switching their government email system from Microsoft Outlook to a um, kind of homegrown system called Expresso. They have also been pressuring some companies to host Brazilian clients' data locally. And they also have one of the world's largest IXP ecosystems. So they're very actively trying to avoid the United States. Um, and after looking at these different countries, we selected a few 
that we wanted to study in more detail. We wanted to study these transnational routing detours. So these countries in green are the five countries we studied more closely. We picked Brazil for the reasons I just mentioned. They're actively trying to avoid the United States. We also selected Kenya. Uh, they have an IXP and they also have multiple submarine cable landing points. We picked India for similar reasons. They have multiple cable landing points. They also have the second largest number of internet users in the world. Uh, it's hard to tell on this map, but we also picked the Netherlands. The Netherlands has uh, one of the largest IXPs and they're also a location that's becoming more popular for building CDNs. And lastly, we picked the United States. So the United States is a known surveillance state. It also hosts a lot of US tech companies, a lot of the largest companies in the world. So after picking these countries that we wanted to study, we can go back to our first question, which is which countries are internet paths to popular destinations currently traversing. And in our study, we found that this is actually the United States, um, the most common country for paths originating in India, Kenya, Netherlands, and Brazil is the United States. And so next I'll talk about how we got to this result and a couple other key findings. So we wanted to analyze these paths to popular destinations. And we looked at the Alexa Top 100 for the five different countries we studied. Um, each have a different set of Top 100 domains and they're pretty different. So we looked at these and we wanted to include any third party domains that are also automatically fetched when these pages are loaded. So what we did was we had five VPN connections to the five countries we studied and after connecting to these, we curled each of the top 100 domains. And this gave us the HTTP response body where we could extract the third party domains. And this gave us a resulting set of third party domains and the top 100 domains that would be the endpoints for the paths we're gonna study. And so from there, we used Ripe Atlas to conduct local DNS queries. We used about 20 different probes in each of the five countries we studied. And this gave us a set of IP addresses. And we had this mapping of domain to IPs then. The next step was using those same probes in those five countries to run trace routes to these IP addresses. And this left us with a set of trace routes which we then cleaned up and mapped to the country level using a geolocation service. And so this resulting product is a set of country level paths that we could then analyze. And the first thing we looked at was what are the endpoints? Where are these popular domains being hosted? And so this table here, you can see on the top, the countries we studied. So these are the starting points of all the paths in Brazil, Netherlands, India, Kenya, and the United States. And then the countries in the leftmost column are the countries where the path terminated. And each fraction represents the fraction of paths that started in the country at the top and ended in the country on the left. So for example, 77% of paths that started in Brazil actually end in the United States. Uh, and so we can see most of these fractions are actually quite small. The one exception is the United States as the endpoint. So we can see these fractions are significantly larger, which means a significantly larger percentage of paths end in the United States than in any of the other countries. Uh, this is Important to note because Brazil is trying to avoid the United States and 77% of their paths are ending there. But we can also see there's a large percentage of paths ending in the US that start in India and Kenya, which are geographically pretty distant. So then we looked at the whole path and we looked at which countries are on the path at any point. 
So this is a similar format as the previous table. The countries we studied are on the top, and those are the starting points. The countries on the left are anywhere on a path from those countries. And so we can see, for example, that about 84% of paths that start in Brazil transit the United States at some point. And so we can see yet again that the United States is an outlier here. Um, over 50% of the paths starting in any of the countries we studied actually transit the United States. And we can also see that there's a significant portion of traffic from the Netherlands, India, and Kenya that transits Great Britain, which is another known surveillance state. One other thing I want to point out here is um, the path starting in Kenya, about a third of them transit either Mauritius or South Africa. And these can be explained by IXPs or the submarine cables. So on to our second question. Uh, does local traffic leave the country? And if it does, where does it go? So we found that despite both the Netherlands and Brazil having large IXPs, their traffic, their local traffic often trombones to the United States. And so we can look a little more closely at the Netherlands here. This, these are the fraction of tromboning paths and the countries they trombone to. So we see the two most common are the United States and Great Britain both members of that surveillance agreement, the Five Eyes. Um, but the rest of the countries that Netherlands traffic trombones to are actually geographically close to the Netherlands, which we can see on this map here. And so it makes more sense that local Netherlands traffic is tromboning to, say, Germany than it is to, say, the United States. Next, we can see Brazil's local traffic, and they have one outlier here. The United States sees about 80% of their tromboning traffic, despite the fact that they are taking such measures to make sure this doesn't happen. Um, and then lastly, we can look at Kenya's local traffic. Kenya's Local traffic has a little bit of a different distribution than the past two countries we looked at. Um, we see that certain surveillance states see some small fraction of Kenya's local traffic, but there's one outlier, Mauritius sees most of the tromboning traffic. And this can be explained by this cable map here. Mauritius is the island circled in red, and there are direct cables from Kenya to Mauritius, and then also to South Africa and the UAE, which are also both on this bar chart here. So they also see Kenya's local traffic. So to summarize these routing detours that are currently happening, um, we see that routing detours often transit surveillance states, especially the United States. We also see that local traffic doesn't always stay local, and it also tends to transit surveillance states. So what can clients do? Is it possible to avoid certain countries, like surveillance states, and can we do this by tunneling traffic through relays? So this brings me to the second part of our work on avoiding routing detours through surveillance states. And we found actually that relays can help avoid most countries most of the time, but it's significantly more difficult to avoid the United States and sometimes impossible. Um, so I'll talk about how we got to that result and a few others. First, we had to define some way to measure country avoidance or how avoidable a country is. And so this is defined by the fraction of paths that do not pass through country X, where country X is the country we want to avoid. And we have a simple example here. Um, we have a client in Brazil, and we are studying these three paths to popular destinations. And this client wants to avoid the United States. Two of these paths actually go through the United States. One goes directly to Europe, 
And so the country avoidance for avoiding the United States would be one out of three, because only one of the paths do not go through the US. But if we were to set up some relays, for example, one in Europe and one in Australia, maybe we could route traffic through these relays and it would route around the United States or pick a different replica. And so those three red paths then become these three green paths. And we see that only one of the paths go through the United States. So the country avoidance value goes up to two thirds. And so a country avoidance value closer to zero means the country is less avoidable, whereas a country avoidance value closer to one means it's more avoidable. And so this shows that relays actually might help avoid certain countries. And so now that we have this way of quantifying country avoidance, we had to get the paths that we wanted to study. And so we needed the paths from the client in these five countries to our set of relays, and then also the country level paths from these relays to popular destinations. So first we measured the client to relay paths, and we connected to those VPNs from the first measurement study. And from there, we trace routed to the relay's IP addresses. We set up 12 relays that spanned 10 different countries. Uh, they're shown here in purple. They included the US, Brazil, Ireland, France, Germany, Spain, Australia, Singapore, Korea, and Japan. And so this resulted in a set of trace routes from the client to the relay. And then we cleaned this up and also mapped these two countries. And then the second part was finding the relays to popular destination paths. And so we took our domain to IP mapping from the first measurement study, where, and we got this from locally resolving um, the domains, the popular domains. And we then SSH'd into our 12 relays, and from there we trace routed to these IP addresses, which left us with a set of trace routes that we mapped to country level. And so at the end of this, we had country level paths from client to relay and country level paths from relays to popular destinations. And using these paths in addition to our country avoidance metric, we were able to see which countries are more avoidable than others. And we found that most countries are actually almost completely avoidable. Uh, there are a few exceptions. This table here shows the country we studied, the path starting points in the top row. And for each of the countries we studied, we measure the country avoidance without relays and with relays. And then the countries in the leftmost column are the country we want to avoid. And so we can see example for Brazil, uh, path starting in Brazil when we're not using any relays. 15% of the paths can avoid the United States, which is relatively low. Um, and we can see this is the case for the four countries that weren't the US that we studied. Um, these are significantly lower than the country avoidance values for other countries. Um, and we can also see that when we use relays, this country avoidance value goes up, which means a higher fraction of paths can avoid the United States when we route through relays. It's important to note, though, that these higher values are actually significantly lower than when clients try to avoid any other country. One other thing to note is for clients in Kenya, the, about a third of the paths from Kenya transit Mauritius and South Africa, uh, which we noted in the first measurement study. So the country avoidance value is about two thirds here. And for Kenyan clients trying to avoid South Africa, relays actually don't help. Uh, for every path from the client in Kenya to our relays, South Africa is on the path. So relays do not help in this case. On the other hand, uh, relays are very effective at helping clients in Kenya avoid Mauritius. About 99% of the paths can then avoid Mauritius when we use relays. And so to our last question, can end users keep local traffic local? And 
we analyzed this using the relays in the same country as the client. We found that tromboning Brazilian paths actually decreased from 13.2% to 9.7%. Uh, and this shows that using these relays will help keep some fraction of paths from tromboning outside of the country. And so a summary on our avoidance study here is that it's significantly more difficult to avoid the United States than it is to avoid any other country. Um, and these relays do help keep local traffic local as we can see by the decrease in tromboning paths from Brazil. I want to touch on a quick, a few different future work topics here. Um, we plan to study the connectivity within a country. We noticed that clients in one geographic part of a country may have better connectivity in terms of country avoidance than clients in different parts of the same country. We also want to study the relationship between IXPs and these routing detours in more detail. Uh, specifically, we want to see uh, are IXPs on the path for these tromboning paths or not, and why this is happening. There are quite a few questions we can ask about IXPs and country avoidance. And then the last idea we're pursuing right now is IPv6 connectivity, so our whole study was based on IPv4, but we imagine that if we did the same study on IPv6, that the results would look quite different. And so I just want to conclude with a few of the main findings. One is that paths commonly traverse known surveillance states. Um, in particular, 84% of paths originating in Brazil actually traverse the United States, despite all the extreme measures they're taking to make this not happen. Um, we also found that relays can help prevent routing detours through surveillance states, um, but unfortunately, some of the most prominent surveillance states are also the least avoidable. And we can also see that these relays help keep local traffic local, as evidenced by decreasing tromboning paths. And so these are just a few of our results, but we have a full write-up and more data on our project website, ransom.cs.princeton.edu. Um, and at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions. Hello. Hi, that's uh, Will Hargrave from LONAP. Um, I have a question about some of your data. Um, I notice you say, to, to pick one out, uh, that 40% of traffic from the Netherlands is, appears to be passing through the US. I wondered if you've done any actual verification of that based on round trip time. The reason why I ask this is um, if my transit provider was sending that volume of traffic, the performance would be poor, very poor. I would fire them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, we didn't do any verification on RTT. Um, we also didn't study performance as part of this work, it's future work. Um, and we did some work with cleaning up geolocation data. Um, it, that's probably your question there. Um, but we, we have no way right now of completely verifying all of our, all of our country lookups. Um, there's a lot of research going on, though, in that area, and it would be easy to kind of apply that to our work. On that, on that same subject, Mauritius um, is the headquarters of Afrinic, I believe. Yeah. So that, that could be a suggestion there. But yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Front microphone. Um, Roland Freisek, Surfnet. Um, interesting talk. Thank you very much. Um, a question I have is about the trace routes that you used. Mm -hmm. um, did you also look at path asymmetry? So did you trace the path in both directions and does that make a difference for the numbers that you see? Does that make it harder to avoid certain countries? Right, so we, we couldn't actually measure the reverse path for the study we did because we don't have a vantage point at popular destinations. 
But we did do a small asymmetry study from ripe Atlas probes to Amazon EC2 instances and reversed it and measured the country level asymmetry. And we actually found it's not symmetric in most cases, maybe about a third of the time it was actually symmetric at the country level. Um, we also looked at if the reverse path was how often that was a subset of the forward path. Um, and that happened about 50% of the time. So there are a number of cases where we're actually underestimating the number of countries that will see this traffic because we're only looking at the forward path. Okay, so it's, yeah. even, uh, it's even worse than, yeah. than we see here. Okay, thank you very much. And the left microphone. Yes, uh, Bill Goldstein. I'm retired from AT&T, though I work uh, independently now. My views do not, uh, are my own, do not represent AT&T. My issue with what you have here is that it seems to have a, an assumption that the surveillance states, those which have established policies for doing surveillance and uh, sharing, are the only states doing surveillance. Uh, all your definition of surveillance state shows is that there's at least been an attempt to encode this uh, surveillance, uh, and I mean a legal, not a technical sense, in policy and in rule of law. Uh, many of the states that you put down uh, or, or you, you describe as non-surveillance states, may be, there may be all sorts of surveillance going on. Uh, there are uh, uh, you know, laws such as you know, Title 18 of the U.S. Code, the Section 2511, uh, which uh, you know, very specifically state what can and cannot be done uh, and the legal procedures that must be followed. And I wondered if it might be more fruitful to take a look at the uh, so-called surveillance states that have tried to uh, at least made some attempt to uh, govern this by rule of law and determine if this is effective and whether such states or to what degree such states actually follow that the laws that they've encoded. Yeah, no, I, I agree. We didn't look um, very in depth at all of the policies of the countries we studied. Um, this was more of scratching the surface and seeing where these routing detours are going in light of different surveillance laws coming up, but we didn't look in detail and see if there are any clauses or other policies that negate the effects. But that's definitely something that we'll look into. Thank you very much, Annie.